the theme for this week is all about creating effective relationships at work. During the pandemic, one of the things that has really dramatically been damaged is people's relationship. And you may think, yes, I'm still getting on with people, but actually the relationships have changed. And because they've changed, we need to do different things. So this week, I'm really going to dig deep into the whole subject of relationships because it's something I'm absolutely passionate about. It's something I do a lot of work with people on. And it's amazing how much you can achieve when you get relationships right. So if you join the call, please tell me where you're joining from. Say hi, put a heart up there, a thumb, you know, sign, let me know you're there. Really great. And if you have any questions during the call, please make sure you put them in the comments because we're getting better at noticing those. And of course, if I don't answer them actually on the call, then of course I will respond to them after the call, when the call's been recorded. So, relationships, relationships, relationships. Um, let's start this. There are two types of relationships. Ones that work and ones that don't work. Effective ones and ineffective ones. However, we very rarely think about the effectiveness of our relationships. We don't really think about them in that sort of terminology. We'd go, yeah, I like the person, or I don't like the person, um, I get along with them, or I don't get along with them. But actually, when we say, how effective is it? It's probably a question that we would have difficulty answering, because how would I measure the effectiveness? And the interesting thing is that most of our relationships that we have are opinion-based relationships, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute, and also they're unintentional, they're accidental, they've happened by chance. And in the business world, we have an opportunity, because of the way business is structured, to actually make many more of our relationships intentional. And if we do that, we start to be able to get deeper impact on the relationships and also make them more effective. We end up having something to measure their effectiveness against. So here's my structure for relationships and we all know about banter relationships because that's if you've, sorry I'm going to say if you go down the pub and wouldn't we all love to do that, but if you are out and about with somebody <laughs> socially distanced or if eventually when we get down to go to the pub, you know those sort of conversations you have at the bar or in, in an evening with a group of friends, it's banter, it's fun, it's jolly, it's entertaining, um, it can be amusing, it can be boring. Um, but it's, it's sort of a very sort of disorganised conversation. It's basically entertainment, but it breaks the ice. It's an icebreaker conversation. And often that's where most relationships start. Even in the workplace, that's where most relationships start. However, there's another level of relationship, which is called the data relationship. Now, that's really an interesting relationship and I had to put it in here because it exists but it's really hard sometimes to describe but that's where you have a relationship with someone or something who provides you with information and that's the end of the interaction they're just providing you with information often at request or sometimes without a request but you are in a relationship with a thing normally an entity that is providing you with data then we come to the opinion-based relationships. Now, I said that most of our relationships are opinion-based, and I'll explain that a little bit further. Uh, let's take a work example. So you're at work and you're a manager and you have somebody working for you, and you're going to ask them to do something. You're gonna make a request to them to do something at work. And as you walk across the room towards them, you look at them and they've got that look on their face. And you know instinctively that it's going to be a struggle to get them to do anything. So you don't ask them to do anything and you just go and do it yourself. Or let's take it outside the workplace. You've got a friend and you need a bit of help with something. You need them to help you lift something out of the car or uh, to borrow their van or to do something. That You just need them to help you in some way. And you either pick up the phone or you look at them and you, and you know by looking at their face that they're not in the mood. Because something's going on in their life that is actually more important than the friendship. Because at that moment in time, what they're thinking about is more important than you. So actually, they're not going to be very helpful. 
And we have this opinion about the world, life, and our relationships gets completely and utterly knocked sideways by it. Those are opinion-based relationships. They have no grounding. There's no real um, base to them. Great when people are in a good mood. They'll help you and they'll be your best friend. But when the chips are down, no, you can't see them for wind. Okay? All of those relationships, the opinion, the data, and the banter, from a point of view of business, of managing people, of working with people, and collaborating with people, are basically useless. You can't rely on them. You can't manage through banter, and you can't manage through opinion. You can manage through data, to a degree, but it's not really that helpful. What we have to do is we have to get below the line and start creating relationships that are emotional-based, or understanding-based, or resource-based. And what is happening as we go down this list is we're increasing the permission of the other party in the relationship to make requests of us, to challenge us, to task us with things. To, so we're giving them permission to interact with us in a very specific way, in an effective way for a particular result. And what you're trying to achieve and work is you're trying to achieve a relationship where your colleague, whether you're collaborating with them or they work for you, it doesn't matter, but your colleague knows that if you're going to ask them something, you're going to make a request of them, or you're going to deliver something to them, you are delivering it with a purpose. It's coming to them, directed to them, based on the purpose of your relationship. And they totally understand that and they trust you. And the more you go down this relationship, the deeper you get towards a resource relationship, the more permission you have, the more ability you can challenge. So at the emotional state, they're sort of testing you out. That might be the new employee. They haven't quite <laughs> worked out how to work with you yet. So you need to understand that they aren't giving you full permission yet to challenge them. You've got to be a bit more cautious with them. You have to um, you know, get into the relationship so you actually have to explain things and keep consistently sticking to the purpose of the relationship. I'll come on to that in a second. The second level is when you get to understanding. Now, I, they understand my direction, my vision, what I'm trying to do. I understand what's important to them. So our dialogue now can become more sophisticated. It can become more structured. Also, I get to make more requests and they get to give me greater feedback. Because now the relationship has reached a level where, do you know what? Yeah, I, I do trust you. I know and I can trust you enough that I can make a request of you because I know you're going to realise I'm saying it in the right way and it's for the right reason. And then you get to the resource level relationship, which is the most profound level of relationship you can get to. This is a relationship where there is no such thing as having to have a brave face. This is, this is where you can actually say anything because the person is going to hear it genuinely. They're not going to hear it with any baggage. Now, if you say something offensive, they'll be able to go... Hey, Adrian, that was offensive. Are you aware of that? Not because they're being offensive back to me or that they are offended, that they know what I said actually came out wrong. And instead of getting out of shape, bent out of shape by it, because we're at a resource level relationship, they know they have, they know they have permission to say back to me that actually, no, I don't want uh, you to say that. I don't want to have that conversation because actually you're out of order. And I'm in a situation because of my relationship with them where I'm going to say, yes, I, I was out of order. Let's do something about it. So what we're trying to do is improve the depth of our relationship from that initial banter right the way down to resource level. Where when I ask for something or I say something, it's heard with the understanding that what we're trying to do is go from this banter relationship, which is very... Um, light-hearted to a relationship, a resource level relationship, which has a profound sense of respect, of um, nurturing, of challenge, of, of being permission to say what you need to say, so that actually people are responding and working with each other without any baggage. You're leaving your baggage outside of the room. As a business coach, when I work with a client, I have to work at this level, otherwise I'm going to bring my baggage to the room, and that's just not, just not appropriate. So what is this thing about purpose? Well, let's have a little talk about that because this is whole week is about this subject. So in any relationship, it is a one-to-one -one relationship. It is you and them. 
That is all a relationship is, it's one to one. You can talk about relationships with teams, a one to many relationship, but actually, although there is the team would be the one thing, each individual in that team, you have a specific relationship with them. So if you employ a team of six people, you have a relationship to the team where you can talk about the team, one thing, but that's not about talking about the individuals. You have to talk to the individuals one to one. And for each individual in the team, there is a purpose for your relationship. So I'm employing you to do a job for me. My purpose is to make sure that I understand all the things you need to be able to do the job. And my purpose is to make sure that you really understand what I'm expecting from you and what I expect you to contribute to my business. That's the purpose of my relationship. It is also to nurture, inspire, challenge and empower you to deliver your best. So it's to nurture, empower, challenge and inspire you to deliver your best, to understand what you need and to make absolutely clear that you know what I expect you to contribute to the business. Very clear purpose. So the corresponding purpose to an employee that really works with me well and it goes well is their purpose back must be to understand the contribution I'm looking for, to also be able to tell me exactly what they need to be able to do their job to the best, and to engage with me to and let me know what I can do to make it easier for them to deliver their best. Because together we're going to create the dynamic that supports that relationship. Now the dynamic can be the number of times we talk, the types of meetings we have, the way I delegate things to them, um, how we respond to each other on emails, whether I, when I see them in the office, what sort of conversation do I have with them quickly as I walk past, my management, my walking conversations. So it's always talking to them, communicating with them to support this purpose. So that then I know if that relationship is working, they are going to be delivering their best to the organisation and I am going to be ser serving them with all of the things that they need to be able to do that. And their purpose is being met because their purpose is to fulfil the contribution that they want to make. You know, everybody, as we talked in the recruitment thing, uh, recruitment um, lives the other week, everybody wants to make a contribution. So the purpose of my relationship is to enable that person to make that contribution to my business. Now, if they don't want to contribute something valuable for my business, then this purpose doesn't work. The dynamic won't work because actually what they want to contribute isn't what I want in my business. So that's the wrong person in the wrong role. Now, when you understand that, you can then do something about it. And what I'm going to do uh, on Friday is go into this in much more depth and give you some tips and some tools to help you identify what it is you need to do in the relationships that are important to you so that you can make them work for you better and also so that you can serve the other person in the relationship so that they are making the best contribution to you. Now, just as a final sort of thought about this, we're talking about relationships and business, but this is just as important in relationships, in families, with friends, especially now with lockdown, because we're all at home. We're on top of each other, and that can build up pressure. So think about the purpose and the dynamic of the relationships you need to have between you as a family, different roles you're playing at different times during the day, and understand that you're all doing it out of love, out of care, out of generosity, and you're being compassionate, you're being kind, you're being considerate, you're being optimistic and resilient, focused and patient, you're being measured, generous, empathetic, concerned for them, you're being responsive to their needs, they're being responsive to your needs, you're being respectful, you're being precise and clean about what you need to say and what you don't need to say, and above all, you're being consistent. So the relationship at home works just the same, it's just harder sometimes when we're not in a business relationship to define what that purpose is. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below if you're watching the recording. And I look forward to seeing you on Friday at 1.30 in the Facebook group. 
to be to serve community where we're going to go much deeper depth into much deeper depth that's good uh, much deeper into relationships and really work out the dynamics of relationships and how to repair relationships when they go wrong because relationships actually are quite simple to repair and if there's anything going wrong in your company I can guarantee you that somewhere in there there's a purpose or a dynamic of a relationship that isn't aligned. I look forward to seeing you on Friday. This is Adrian Brown saying bye for now.